I'm Bryn Roberts, Head of Operations for Pharma Research and Early Development at Roche. And I'm going to be talking today about big data and the application of technologies like artificial intelligence and so on in research and development. And then thinking a little bit forward to how these um, can have an impact on personalized healthcare and then looking much farther forward to think about how technologies maybe like quantum computing may, uh, may have a role to play. So technology is absolutely key to personalized healthcare because it relies on, on data. So to get that precision, we, uh, we need high resolution understanding of the biology and the disease. That means big data. So genomic information, genetic sequencing, imaging data, even monitoring movement in the clinic, these types of things which produce huge amounts of data. So tech is required just to produce the data, but then to manage the information and to provide the analytics required uh, it's a very technical um, requirement approach. We apply um, tech and I think now I'm going to think about um, big data and probably advanced analytics and particularly machine and deep learning. Uh, we apply them across the R&D spectrum. So in Roche we have examples that start early in research, for example looking at images from models of tumour cells or from um, ophthalmic images, where there's a huge amount of information encoded within an image that we, we would lose if we just purely looked at certain features. So using deep learning architectures, for example, we can draw a lot more information from those. Very practical examples. So as we bring a biologic towards the market, for example, an, a, a, an antibody treatment, uh, perhaps an onco or immunology example, we have to prove the clonality of the cell line that produces that antibody and the, the regulatory authorities demand that. And that sounds like a trivial challenge, but actually it's extremely difficult to do at scale. So again, we apply uh, automated image analysis, deep learning approaches to uh, make that process very robust. And then as we get into the clinic, I think technology is really exploding there for us. So one of the areas we've really been innovating in um, is the use of digital biomarkers. So using uh, sensors, mobiles, wearables to have an exquisite understanding of how patients, particularly with neurodegenerative disorders, for example, Parkinson's disease uh, or multiple sclerosis, how they are, um, how their disease is progressing and how they're responding to treatment in the clinical study. The fact that people are used to um, monitoring their movement or behavior or steps or whatever using uh, wearables and sensors, either their mobile phone or specialist devices, um, really helps us. Because as we talk to patients then in the clinical program about using the Roche app or the Roche phone or the Roche watch or whatever, um, it's kind of a familiar concept. And it also means as people are used to using technology in their everyday lives, they can adhere to our um, a, clinical trial programs more, uh, more easily. So when we describe to people, perhaps they have to do each day maybe an active test, a few special tests on their phone, um, that's not a big deal for them if they're used to checking their email or their Facebook or whatever. And likewise, if we talk to them about continuous monitoring, you know, they're gonna wear a device or a sensor um, by which we will be able to gather data about their movements, uh, about how they're performing in daily tasks, Many people are familiar with that already from, uh, from their daily lives. Fair data are data that are findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And this is really important for us as we bring data together from different sources, perhaps different clinical trials or real world data sources. Without fair data, this whole uh, buzz now of artificial intelligence would, would struggle. In fact, I would say well, it's really impossible to do artificial intelligence machine learning without fair data. And for a number of reasons. The first is we need data at scale. We need meaningful data at scale to build um, powerful models that predict, for example, response to treatment or progression of disease, uh, prognostic and so on. The second sort of challenge is we also need data from very different sources. So we want a, a good coverage of data from different populations, from different trials, to build a robustness in our models. I'm particularly interested in quantum computing 
And I have to say, this is getting ready for perhaps 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years down the road. As we gather more and more of these very, very large data sets, and, we, and we're building models which are um, hugely complex, um, the, the power of classical computing can only scale to a certain point. So we have had the, the luxury of Moore's law, benefiting from Moore's law over the past couple of decades, where high performance computing has kept track with our volumes of data and the complexity of the models and the, and the questions we're asking. I believe we're entering a phase now where classical computing may start to drop behind. And so we're working with a number of academic and industrial partners uh, looking at how quantum computers, particularly universal quantum computing, may be applicable to life sciences and particularly to, to pharma R&D.